It gets lonely up here by yourself sometimes, you know? Crazy, you know? Back into the flow. You know what it's like to try to get spiritual after being on stage, isn't it? <clears throat> okay. Got to think like a pastor. Let me see, we need new stained glass windows over there. Oh, mm -hmm. New pipe organ. Pull out all the stops. Yes. Oh, play the collection plate. To inspire giving. And hand carved solid oak pews. Hallelujah. Hear about this pastor? He's a he's pastor from uh, Cucamonga, no, Garden Grove. And he's building this crystal cathedral, huh? It can stand anything up to an 8.0 earthquake. God's got an 8.1 all waiting. <laughs> yes, now you can be the proud owner of a crystal part and buy a crystal tower for a hundred dollars. Just a measly hundred dollars. You can have your name printed on the crystal. People will worship God into your crystal. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Send now for your hour of power, prayer towel. Hallelujah. This is guaranteed to heal you the way it healed me in the studio. I was speaking like this this morning. <laughs> and it healed me, see? You want to get healed? Lay hands on your radio. Now keep one hand shaking on your radio and reach into your pocketbook. I know there's a grandmother out there with a $20 bill in her cookie jar. Hallelujah. Power of God's come out upon me, and I'm going to get rich, rich, rich. <laughs> you serve God, and you serve money, you're going to hell. Period. Better watch it. If you get religious, you can't go to heaven. You can't be religious and go to heaven. You gotta love the Lord. And you can't be religious and love the Lord. It's impossible. Can't do it. God doesn't want to hear little murmuring prayers. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. Man, God's sick of that stuff. He doesn't like it. He wants to hear hearts. He wants to hear people talking to him. People weeping on their knees for revival to sweep through the churches. You know, it's a lot easier to cool. You know, don't let anybody ever tell you. Don't ever love my brother. Hi, Judy. How you doing? What are you doing, friend? Well, uh, uh, yeah. Well, here's this really new movie. You know. This, it's X-rated, but it's, it's kind of biblical. Sodom and Gomorrah, you know? Uh, why, why don't we go see it, you know? We'll, we'll bring your Bible along, you know? We'll just you know, bring the chain reference, you know? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. That's me. I'm more powerful than a strong concordance. Faster than a speeding theologian. Able to leap tall commentaries in a single bound. <laughs> see you later, Judy. Yeah, that's the way it is. All over America, the American church are the frozen chosen. All over America, wherever I go, everybody's being a silent witness. And you know what? The church used to be called to be a thorn in the side of the world. 
We were called not to get along with the world. But today, we're so busy trying to get along with the world. You know what Jesus said that, well, what, did, what did Jesus say that friendship with the world was? Anybody got that answer? Enmity with God. Enmity. That's a hard word. Enmity. It means you are an enemy of God if you're a friend of the world. How come all the churches are trying to make such a big splash in the secular world? Got to reach the people, man. They come all day strong. Huh? Join the mafia to reach the mafia? Makes sense. <laughs> Shit them down for Christ. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes, we are supposed to be flexible when it comes to theology. We're supposed to be flexible when it comes to doctrine. I mean, it's ridiculous some of the things that churches are splitting over around America. In Sweet Home, Oregon, there's 4,800 people and there's 48 churches. The Church of Christ in the town had a little split. It was really over an important issue. Half of them wanted warm water in the baptismal, the other half wanted cold water in the baptismal. Now they've got the warm, warm water in the baptismal Church of Christ and the cold water in the baptismal Church of Christ. Real important. They don't talk to one another. You dirty, warm water, baptismal, Christian. Yeah. I'm not kidding. It's true. It's a fact. You can go to three home and you can find them. And that's not what they're called. You know? It's the Georgia Christ over here and the Georgia Christ over there. One's got a hot water heater in the back. It's one of them. Are we going to stop playing church and start being the church? Are we going to start representing Jesus to our friends and our neighbors? Or are we going to keep putting on that Accident Christian charismaniac smile. What are we going to do? Are we going to come out looking the same? You know, here we are at the cruise and back. They're coming out like this. God doesn't want us all to look the same. He wants us all to look like Jesus. He doesn't want us all to have beard. He wants us to all have glow. He wants us to all be producing one of two reactions in people. Conviction or anger. When we walk into a room, people should either feel a conviction like they've got to get right with God or they should feel like they've got to get out of there quick. Because every man of God, from day one to the last day in Revelation, created either conviction or anger. He didn't create this get-along-with-the-world attitude that we've all got. And I don't blame you for having it. It's seeped into the church. We've been lied to, folks. Lied to. Our pastors aren't lying to us. They've been lied to, too. When in Rome, do as the Romans do. When in the world, do as the world does. We can't do it no more. We've got to stand up and be different. I'm not talking about the way we dress and the way we wear our hair and the way our music sounds. We've got to be different by what we do. We're different by what we say. We're saying praise the Lord every time a rock drops in our toe. We're certainly different like that. We've got to be different by what we do. Or you might as well just fold up your Bible and forget it because you're just worth it. If you don't bear any fruit, you have no use to Remember when you went for the fig tree? Did you think that? I don't even know how you think. Even a fig root of anything. And the fig tree went, the tree's good, huh? And Jesus cursed the fig tree. <laughs> Shriveled up and died right before his eye. It's the only time in the Bible Jesus cursed anything. Now why did he curse the fig tree? He didn't reach over and swat him. He didn't say any nasty words. It was just doing its job, except it wasn't doing its job. It was growing leaves, it was growing lots of stems. Boy, what firewood it would have made. But no fruit. John 15, any man who abides in me will bear much fruit. And any bear, a man who bears fruit will be pruned back so he can bear more fruit. If any branch in me does not bear fruit, it is taken out of the vine. Men gather them and they are burned. Don't be fooled. Going to church doesn't make you a Christian any more than going to McDonald's makes you a hamburger. Don't be fooled. You can't look your way into Christianity. You can't put the Christian smile, the Christian bumper stickers, and the Christian t-shirts on. You've got to prove. It says in John 15, It is my Father's will that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciple. I'll say it again. It is my Father's will 
that you bear much fruit and so prove. You know, I don't got to prove it. No. Well, the Bible says you got to prove to be a disciple. Not everyone who saith, Lord, Lord, to enter the kingdom, only he who does the will of God. And I tell you that every man who hears and acts upon the word is like a man who builds his house upon the rock. And the wind blow and the storm came and all the stuff came down. And the house did all. It didn't fall down. But every man who hears the word and does not act upon the word is like a man who builds his house upon the sand. And the winds blew and the rains came and the storm raged and the house went all fall down. Boom. Let me tell you about those two houses. You were driving down the street and one house was built on the sand and one house was built on the rock. If they were real physical houses, you'd go, those are nice houses. You can't see the foundation. You can't go, that house is built on the sand, I can tell. You go in beach clothes. You won't be able to tell. In fact, in fact, if you built your house on the sand, you'd have about seven to eight thousand dollars more to put into your house. Then if you would have had to chip away, you know, see the guy in the sand laughing at the guy in the rock. Oh, <laughs> chipping away. I got a great lot. It was about five thousand dollars cheap. I don't have to put any money into the foundation. It's great. I'm gonna put it in the stained glass window. Use the brick chimney. And we plan railroad ties for my walkway. Pins. Bendy. Tacandra! Sprinkler! Double car garage. And lots of things to party away with. And the storm comes and has falls because he didn't. It looks just the same. People come by and go, wow, man, what a great house. Looks better than that dumb thing on the rock up there. Man, you got class. The stained glass windows and the petunias and the pansies. If you don't follow Jesus and obey him, the world's going to like you. Guaranteed. It's a biblical promise. Follow the world, the world will love you. Follow the Lord, the world will hate you. Does the world hate you? Maybe you're not following the Lord. That's a sign of following the Lord. The world will hate you. It's a guarantee. It's a promise. Believe it. Or call God a liar. <laughs> One or the other. Does the world love you? People in the world love you? Do they feel real comfortable around you? Then you're not doing your job. Our job is not to make the world uncomfortable. Our job is to obey Jesus, and that will make the world uncomfortable. Our job is not to be obnoxious for the world. Our job is to obey the Lord, which the world will call obnoxious. You fanatic. You belong in a funny farm. Let's go weed some Christian baskets. Put in a loony bin, man. And we can't think, right? Jesus got spat upon. Peter got crucified upside down. Yeah. Crucified upside down. He, he didn't count himself worthy to be crucified right side up. James and Paul, they went easy. They had their head chopped off. Bartholomew went a different way. He was skinned alive. That's right. Skinned alive. Ooh, we had dinner. What if somebody held a gun to your head right now and said, deny Jesus? I'll pull the trigger. Probably most of you would go pull the trigger. That's the easy way out. Every day that Satan holds a little more subtle gun to our head and said, be friendly with the world or I'll pull the trigger. Oh, no, I don't want to offend the world. Oh, no, I'll pull the trigger. God wants us to go out and raise hell, not forsake heaven. Raise the consciousness of this world by being alive. Unless we do it, all we are Pew warmers. God doesn't need pew warmers. If you want a pew warmers, you just buy a whole bunch of hot water bottles and set them up on the pews. You know, Jehovah's Witnesses, if you were just half as zealous as the cults, just half, there'd be a revival in six months, we could all go home. Forget this whole thing. Jehovah's Witnesses, want to buy some poison? Anything. The Mormons are bicycling all over America. Da -da 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 right? Now don't you laugh. You're worse. You're all worse. You're sitting in the pews going, God will do it. 
Pastor will take care of it. Oh, you know, board of directors are voted into existence. Meanwhile, here's the board of directors. Come to order. Today we have to elect a new salad bowl committee. Yes. Now we're going to uh, subdivide the salad bowl committee into the uh, lettuce subcommittee and the uh, radish subcommittee and the celery subcommittee. And then we're going to sub subdivide the uh, dressing committee into the oil and vinegar sub subcommittees. Well, important stuff, you know. We need a new Sunday school advisor for the three to three and a half year old. Put him on staff. You know. Show them where the tides are going. Oh, God's getting ready to spit a bunch of stuff out of his mouth. And I'm not going to be a guy. I'm not going to get spit out of his mouth. Jesus said, many are called, but few are chosen. It's the scariest thing that he said to me. Because I know I'm called. And I don't. No for sure. I'm sure. Like, you guys, it's weird. You got an album on the charts. What do you mean you don't know if you're chosen? I'm being honest with you. I'm being honest as I can be. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm going to endure to the end. And then I'll be chosen. Jesus said in Matthew 10, And many shall be killed for my name's sake, but it is he who endures to the end who shall be saved. You never hear a sermon on that in church because nobody wants to endure to the end. No Christian wants to hear about enduring. They just want to hear about getting blessed. They want to hear when Michael and Marty's next album is coming out. They want to find out what the name of Second Chapter of Acts next album is going to come out. They're looking for autographs. They're looking for souvenirs. Looking for anything but to die and be obedient. They're more, ha they're more worried about their happiness than their holiness. And I tell you, he who endures to the end shall be saved. If anybody tells you anything different, they're lying to you. They may not mean to, but they're lying to you. What if you hired somebody to watch over your house and your children and your possessions for a month? And for 29 days, they did a great job. 30th day, they started molesting your children. They started getting drunk. They started inviting friends over. They started breaking all your windows. You come home. Now, are you going to say, well done, because for 29 days, they did a good job? Or are you going to give him what he deserves for what he did to 30? Do you think you can be a Christian for 20 years and then the 21st year go to bed with your, next, your, your best friend's wife? Can an adulterer enter the heaven? Can you help? No. Only forgiven people. We're all forgiven. Okay. I forgive you. Go and sin. Come on. That's a hard thing to, to follow, but it's a command. Be ye perfect, as your Father in heaven is perfect. Well, that's a heavy. He told it to us. Did I do it? No, and Keith, I didn't pay for a sermon. You didn't pay for nothing. It's free. That's why I don't charge people to get into my concert. It's unscriptural. You can't charge for the gospel. You should not be charging for something. I had to balance out Wendell Burton being up here, you know?